Go for zoom. Maybe another C pen here. From Noah. The yeah, genus from Noah is all down axis. This is the one we collected, I think. Yep. Yeah, we got that one. Okay. What are those little white things in the sand? Down to the right of the, or down to the left of the C pen. Ah, uh, I think those are those might be pteropod shells. Oh, okay. I, I do see a ter pteropod shell down there. Okay, go wide. Every time you said Norella, I just thought of Nutella, which is a sign that <laughs> <laughs> we're all hungry and near the end yeah. of our watch. <laughs> yeah, there's a lot of a lot of those kinds of <laughs> coral names that have uh, very closely related um, <laughs> spellings. Like one one genus that I work on is called Muracetes. Okay. And you can imagine if you type in Muracetes, M-U-R-C-E-I-D-E-S into Google, I usually get, did you mean Mercedes? <laughs> <laughs> Would you like to buy one? Yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Hey, hey. It's your birthday? What? Thank you. Happy birthday, Gabby. <laughs> Thank you. Happy birthday. What? Gabby, it's your birthday? Yes. It's my birthday. Oh, <laughs> it wasn't when we started the watch, so. <laughs> oh, we had... We are approaching a watch change, so you may uh, get a little silence for a couple minutes while we get the next watch ready. Gabby, if you're on, lots of happy birthdays in the chat for you. <laughs> oh, thanks, everyone. <laughs> Good morning. Thank you.
Team Blue Water's getting settled in the control band here. Looks like we are ooh, nearing the first summit. Awesome. Ah, uh, yeah, indeed. 225 meters to the summit. You want to get a move? Alrighty. Meet no nope. distance. It's gonna be one four seven. And five zero meters. Okay. Okay. Bridge nav. Uh, good morning. Can I have a five zero meter move bearing one four seven? Zoom in on this guy, please. All right, good morning and welcome to the dive. We are looking at a hemichorallium. This is a pink coral in the family Coralliidae. And on it, you have an associate that is a snake star. Snake star? Yep, because it has those sort of snaky arms that wrap around the branches. And that's, that star does not damage the coral. They I just realized gently you, hold on. You could make up names and we'd all believe you still. Oh, yeah. I just don't know if I'm that creative yet. <laughs> but see, if other people made up names and then told me and then I'm just repeating them, that could be a thing. The six-legged, five-legged star. Yeah, so like every pilot could just make up new names for, for things and then I could just like tell you all of the things. I think it was rather interesting that that coral was on the, a boulder uh, in this field of uh, small rocks. So being on a boulder could be a disadvantage just in case your, your boulder might move at some point. Um, and if you're a coral and your boulder rolls over, that wouldn't be a fun day for you. So that coral's taking a little bit of a risk. But the size of that coral indicates that uh, it might be, you know, in the 60-year-old range, just given uh, how wide the base is. If we got a good measurement on the base, we could maybe estimate its age a little bit more. Um, there, have been, there has been work done on the hemichoralliums and their growth rate. Oh no. I'm just curious as to the setup. Well, there's definitely uh, no lack of rocks around here for geological collections. But our next collection won't be until we reach the summit, and we are almost there. About 100 meters until we get to the, to the summit, maybe a little less. Well, these are nice little coral. All right, we're looking at a Chrysogorgia. And inside the branches of this coral, there's a little squat lobster called Eurotychus. It 
It could be. Uh, it's really hard to tell when you only have three polyps. But you could be right. That's a, a little little baby octocoral, possibly in the family Chrysogorgiidae. Oh, and then here's this one up here. That's different. That could possibly be a Rodanaritogorgia. So another Chrysogorgia, but in a different genus. See how the main axis, that main stalk of the coral is spiraling. Just a little bit. And then uh, in the branches, there is a shrimp. That shrimp is possibly Bathypalinella. I have a good feeling for lots of good biology here at the summit of this seamount. I've got a so is this the true summit of the uh, of the seamount that we're headed toward? This is the very top, correct? This is the, at least to, according to the multi-beam, the shallowest summit, if I remember correctly. Then there is a like a secondary summit over here to the southwest. I think we'll have time to hit both of them before the uh, waves get choppy. Um, I. I I think so. Hard to say, but it would be kind of complicated going between them, so I don't know how fast we'll be able to move. You want to look at that spongy thing? Yeah, let's look at that spongy thing. Okay, uh, zoom in, please. This looks like it could be a new sponge for us. a very leafy looking sponge in the family Phoreidae. I think that might be as far as I can go with that particular sponge. And then there's a black coral that does not have any branches. That's kind of interesting to note. Fine, sure. So there are a couple options for unbranched flat corals mm -hmm. and, and uh, some of the unbranched black corals could be uh, ones that do have branches later, but that one looks like it could have been um, something like parantopathies. Ooh, oh. got some big corals coming up. This one coming into view looks like an Aritogorgia. You can tell that by the big spirals. Oh, that's not the draw tool. <laughs> <laughs> it's big, big spiral. spiral. So this is Aritogorgia magnus spiralis. This guy's almost eaten. Yeah, yeah, that uh, bamboo coral has uh, seen a little bit better days. So part of the coral colony is, is denuded. The tissue has receded from the skeleton. So now you can see the skeleton relatively well. Um, all those nodes and internodes. The nodes are the bony white parts and the, no uh, 
the internodes are the bony white parts and the nodes are the flexible protonaceous parts. So that gives this coral a little bit of flex in the current, which is really advantageous. And it looks like the nodes um, are where the branch points are. So we would call this a nodal keratoacididae. What am I seeing there? Jelly? A jelly jelly? That was okay. a oh, there is a cydipid tenophore in the Argus view. That is gorgeous. So those two long sort of frilly tentacles at the end are its feeding tentacles. And then um, tenophores are a really interesting group of animals. They have rows of cilia that beat, and that's how they swim in the water column. People call them comb jellies because those cilia kind of line up in rows that look a little bit like combs. And when the light hits them, they, they sort of give off a rainbowy shimmer, which is really beautiful. Got a good good feeling for this watch. We're going to see a lot of good stuff. See great stuff every watch, right? Always. There's always something interesting. It's never a dull moment in the deep ocean. So here coming up, we're seeing a really nice large coral. Um, bamboo coral, similar to the same one that we were looking at that uh, was partially denuded, but this one is a lot healthier looking. And that is another thing that uh, I will note when annotating video is uh, how these animals look. So if they look to be damaged or, or partially dead, I'll make those notes. Um, if they've been toppled over. Those are really interesting occurrences. Got a bathymetry question in the chat um, about the shape of the seamount, asking if there's a little caldera on the top of the summit with other peaks and a cone in the middle. Uh, as far as the, the data looks like to me, there is not. What do you say, Erin? Uh, I was actually going to say, I think there is. Is um, there? Uh, you can't really see it in high pack very well. High pack looks terrible because <laughs> we have three or four data sets blending, and none of them really perfectly do the top. But do you see that there? Oh, it's not on. Uh, I can see it. Um, but yeah, zooming out, I do see that now. Um, and then there's, like, if on. I was just looking at the later mouse to see if I can get better contours over the summit and. It does kind of have that shape. Um, or it could just be slumpy. Slumpy. So, hard to say. We'll find out. We shall see. The power of exploration. I think I'll check the bridge. Yeah, for sure. Let's blue take circle. a look at that uh, blue circle. Go ahead and zoom. 
I have a feeling this might actually be a black coral. Zoom, 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 zoom. Yes, it is a black coral. You can see uh, the polyps have these two really long tentacles, and then um, they, they are hexacorals, so they actually have six tentacles, but the other four are actually reduced. So each polyp has two really long tentacles and then four kind of short tentacles. Are all black corals hexacorals? Yes, they are. Are all hexacorals black corals? No. Huh? So other hexacorals. What are rectangle situation? <laughs> I don't know if there are any uh, rectangle corals, but uh, <laughs> anemones and um, hard corals are also hexacorals. You say anemones are corals? Well, the anemones are are in the in the hexacorals. Question: Do we have any idea how old the seamount itself is? That's kind of part of part of what we're exploring for, right? There's a little little sponge over there. Looks like it might be on a stock. Sponge. Where? Oh, it just went off the right <laughs> side of the screen. It's very small. Right here. Or the wee little gap. Yeah, wee 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 little little one. Zoom in, please. Oh, it's so cute. I think, I think this might actually be a demo sponge and not a glass sponge. It looks very glass sponge-like, but there is a stocked demo sponge that looks like a glass sponge that we've seen before on seamounts. So the difference between demo sponges and glass sponges is that demo sponges can have other types of spicules that are, are not made out of glass. So they're a different group of sponge. So sponges that uh, sea sponges you might use in the in the bath are actually demo sponges and not glass sponges. Well, this sponge is pretty cool. That one might be a rosellid sponge. So that one is a glass sponge in the family of Rose rosellidae. But as we zoom in, we'll we'll get a little bit more information about what Wait, kind of please? animal this is. Oh, oh, that's a tricky one. It might not be a rosellid. It might be a euplectelid, just j with uh, really long spicules coming out the outside that have been covered by sediment. And then you can see those two little shrimps living in there. That was cool. Yeah, so that one's euplectelid glass sponge, possibly regadrella. Just tricked me into thinking it might be a rosellid because it had the sort of fuzzy looking outside. There's an example of a hemichorallium that got toppled over. It was living on a cobble and uh, fell over. Oh no. I know there's many ways for uh, things to get toppled over uh, at this depth, but um, what are the water currents like down here? Do you know how strong they get? Um, well, we don't actually know since this is the very first time uh, that this seamount has ever been explored. 
Uh, and currents can vary from day to day in the same way that winds might vary from day to day in a location. Um, one indicator of strong current can be um, large corals. So large corals like some strong current in order to, to feed. So a large coral like this bamboo coral might enjoy uh, strong currents because that brings more food to them. Oh, and there's a fish. fish. But other than that, we don't have any long-term data from this depth at the seamount. Um, we you can sort fish, of please? get an indicator of what the currents might be like by letting Hercules drift and sort of seeing how fast it drifts backwards. Um, but that will only give you a snapshot for today at this very moment. So this is a cutthroat eel, an eel in the family Synaphobrinkidae. And this looks like Synaphobrinkus brevidor salis. I'm basing that identification on the uh, origin of the dorsal fin, which is quite far back on the body. So this is uh, quite a mature individual, very large. Looks very responsible. Mm-hmm. And sometimes when we see these cutthroat eels, they'll shake their heads and swim backwards in Aww. response to seeing the ROV. A little bright. Let's see if we can find that, that dorsal fin. Oh, there it is, right here. So Synaphobrinchus brevidor salis. So they call them cutthroat eels because their gills are right underneath their, well, what, what we might consider to be their neck. And uh, when they are breathing, the gills open and close and the gills are red because that's, that's basically their lungs. And uh, so it kind of looks like uh, someone has slit their neck. That's why they call them cutthroat eels. I had a question in the chat about those shrimp that were living in the, uh, the sponge. Are they uh, held captive there, or do they uh, come and go? Is that their little hideout? Um, once they're in there, uh, they're pretty much captive. Uh, there aren't spaces in that sponge for those shrimps to get out. So once they go in, uh, they never they never leave. They're like little hermits living in their studio apartment. So I've been seeing a number of Faria oca erecta. Those are those uh, glass sponges with the tubes. We'll, we'll take a zoom on that and we'll see one. Sorry. Oh, we just passed it by, but we'll see another one. All right. And then these black corals, the very spirally ones, are stickopathies. That's always a fun one to say. That's my favorite from the day. Definitely a lot more diversity than what we were seeing uh, lower down on the seamount. There's a little Chonoclops coloratus, our little favorite little pink ball of fun. Aww. Pink Aww. ball of fun. They're just so grumpy looking. Can you zoom in on the grumpy pink ball of fun, please? <laughs> and right next to it is that Furia near Oka Erecta, the sponge that I was uh, mentioning. So we got a two for one deal.
That's a really interesting uh, regadrilla sponge, that big vase sponge. At least I thought it would look like regadrilla. No, it might not be. All right. That one was tricky. There's our friend back. Oh, yeah, yeah. Just chilling, hanging out with us. Hey there, buddy. Is it the same one? Um, it looks like it could be the same one, actually. We could compare the video uh, and, and match up those spots, but yeah, the one we were looking at earlier had the spots in the same location, so. And that might be our same cutthroat eel, just sort of following us along. Um, they are predators down here. Ooh, let's take a look at this one. Sure. Big one, big Zoom one. In, please. This is a primnoid coral. And it's got a number of associated animals. We've got some brittle stars. A shrimp. And this, and then, yeah, a nice red shrimp. And a lot of uh, corals living on on boulders up here. I mean, there aren't there isn't a lot of options um, to be sure. There's all, only seems to be boulders around. But I'm really impressed that we've seen so many large Bridge corals nav, another five zero living meters, on boulders. One four seven, please. So that, that probably means that the the current up here near the summit isn't so strong as to push boulders over very often. Ooh, let's take a look at the yellow one. Is it overgrown? That's that's a good question. We'll find out as we zoom in. I believe this might be a plexorid, which zoom. is naturally yellow. But there's always that possibility it could be overgrown with a zoanthid. But this looks like it is naturally yellow plexorid coral with a, an associate snake star. Neat. I think uh, the last watch actually collected one of those. So we'll, we'll let that one be. Oh, you can definitely see something inside that sponge. You want to look at it? Yeah, let's look down into the top of the sponge, see who's living in there. Can't get too low on this one, otherwise I'll squish that coral, but go ahead and zoom there. Hey, buddy. Oh, well, there's a little squat lobster, a munidopsis, living inside that sponge. Cool. And then on the outside, there are some hydroids. So that looks like a Septulifora sponge. Possibly. And seeing a number of small little mushroom corals scattered about as well.
Well, that's kind of interesting. What's going on here? Okay, zoom in, please. Oh, okay. This is a Malteria sponge um, that is mostly dead. And then in the branches, we're seeing a Stoloniferous octocoral that's overgrown. A couple of those branches that stick out of the Walteria. But you can see that a couple near the end over here are actually still alive. And then um, there was a brittle star hanging out in it. And those are some more dead Walteria sponges. They're kind of like hairy sponges. They're vase-like in shape. And then uh, they've got these sort of little branches that stick out all over. When we look at it, this uh, coral right there, mm -hmm. I think it might be a primnoan, another one of those uh, Candidella gigantea, but also it's hard to tell. Down there. Oh, yeah. Might be worth looking at, too. Okay, zoom in there, please. Start at the base and work our way up. Oh, and there's a small Chrysogorgia. And this is a, a Primnoid for sure. And it does look like Candidella gigantea. And the polyps look quite large. They have a number of body scales along the body of each polyp. And they appear to be in whorls of three. So that's pretty typical of Candidella gigantea. Sometimes uh, you can get tricked into thinking something is a unbranched bamboo coral, and then it turns out to be Candidella gigantea. So it's always good to take a look. I got a question about uh, what pressure these uh, animals are living at. Uh, my handy dandy calculator says about. 2,600 PSI? Sounds right to me. Yep, sounds right to me. Something like that. It's a lot of pressure. So much pressure. But to these animals, they don't really feel that pressure in the same way that we don't feel the pressure of the atmosphere pushing on us. So they're staying cool under pressure? Yeah. Real cool, cause it's uh, it's pretty chilly down there. Water temperature is uh, approximately 2.2 .2 degrees Celsius. It's only 2.2 .2 degrees Celsius from freezing. Almost freezing. So cold. I'm glad it's not 2.2 .2 degrees Celsius in the control van. Yeah. Cause I'd need a lot more layers. Curious person in the chat wants to know the difference between a snake star and a basket star. Visually, to a non-marine biologist, they seem pretty similar to me. Um, they are very similar. They're actually in the same group. So um, we just have different common names to differentiate snake stars and basket stars um, because they look visually different. Um, the snake stars don't have branched arms and the basket stars have branched arms. So that's sort of a common way name to uh, differentiate um, those two uh, groups. Um, scientifically, 
Uh, the basket stars Tiny are fish. the Gorgonocephalidae, and sure. the Down. It's almost snake stars the are the Uriality. So those are two different families. Nice. You can I zoom. Here we have a fish. Oh, it's so cute. This is a Liparid, a snail fish. That's a really, yeah, let's take a lot of snaps of this one. It's a good view. Invisible little mouth. Oh, bye. <laughs> oh, bye. <laughs> it's little mouth parts. It's little mouth parts. Yeah, so that, it looks like a juvenile, but that's actually how they look as an adult. So they, they don't really uh, fully develop into, like, your, your normal fish shape, they kind of always stay young looking forever. Well, we are in like summit land, folks. So summit land. What kind of attractions are at summit land? Let, uh, let's see what the summit has to offer. I'm going to move ship. Oh, maybe uh, like 30 meters just south and sure. see what we can see in here. Sure thing. Bridge nav, can we get 30 meters Oh, this is interesting. Oh, it's a, is it an Aritogorgia? Uh, oh, it's pretty low. Okay, zoom in there, please. Just, just a quick one. Yeah. It's got the spiral. It does have the spiral. Yep, it's an Aritogorgia. Sometimes it's hard to tell. They're so wispy. They blend in with the sediment. So I was looking through our animal guide uh, to see if I could get a better ID for that liparid, that little snailfish. Um, possible ID is Paraliparis hawaiiensis. Star. Ooh, yes, that's a nice chunky star. All sorts of coral on top of this rock. Oh rock yeah, this looks like a really great place for coral. A nice stable rock. And now that we found a nice stable rock, all the corals are living up here. The rock we've been looking for. It is the rock we've been looking for. And it shall be noted. Target dropped the rock. Awesome. Rock. E rock. That's the place to be. So there's some Rodana Ritogorgia, some Bathopathies. There's a Corbitellini. Ooh, there's that S1 clade. This is that S1. Yeah. Um, it's a bamboo coral. Zoom in on this guy, please. Bonk. And as we zoom in, I'm just noticing more and more stuff. So Oops. annotating the summit will take a longer time just because there's so much more here than at first meets the eye. Yeah, for sure. Well, um, I won't move the ship beyond this move and just poke around. Tell us where you want us to go. Make sure you feel like we get good coverage. Yeah, yeah. Let's let's check out all the Is things. Is that a fish down there? Oh, yeah, let's uh, see if we can zoom where that fish is. I didn't. I don't see it. Fish is where? It's behind that dead coral, I thought. 
dead core, I don't know. Left, right, up, down. Um, I'm looking for it. I, I might have might have been a pretend fish. The old pretend fish. It's, it would be <laughs> right center, we're right near the... You can zoom in now. Okay, thank you. Nope, there's no fish. I pretend lied. Fish. Oh, okay. Pretend. <laughs> I was like, I don't see it. Well, but there's a really small stick of pathies. Um, oh, can we look at this fuzzy? Yeah, what fuzzy? is fuzzy spiral? It might be an Aritagorgia stock that has stolen Niferin on it. That's okay, my guess. Ahead, oh, it's very pretty. What are you? Yep, it looks like an old Aritagorgia stock. And it's got Stoloniferous stolon, stolon octocorals living on it. Okay, come wide, please. And then I saw some. There's a bunch of really small stickopathies. And then this one's pretty neat. That is that Fereid turbocharger sponge. Do a far away zoom. It has these really cool channels, sort of where the water can flow down through the sponge and then out through the tissue. And then I see all these little, little guys probably living in those tubes. There's, they might be polychaetes, could be some crustaceans. It's hard to tell because you can't really see through the sponge to see what's in there, all but right, there's definitely on. some associates inside that sponge. I want to make it publicly known that I do not think that looks like a turbocharger. <laughs> yeah, I, I've got that comment um, as well from other people who are more well versed in car parts. Can we look at the bamboo, see if there's any associates? Mm -hmm. Okay, zoom in on the bamboo, please. All right, so uh, there looks like a couple hydrozoans living on this bamboo coral where the tissue has receded. Looks like some of the uh, branches had actually bran uh, broken off here and then uh, started to grow back. That's kind of interesting. So these corals can apparently recover when they lose branches, which is good because if we were to make a sample um, that we, we know that the animal will recover That looks like it might be a jasoniasis, uh, notably branching bamboo coral. Seeing a number of Rodanoritagorgia. Go over here real quick. We're also going to keep a lookout for really large uh, sea cucumbers for a collection. We want a nice big one, big one, big one. One of those white ones, right? Um, they can be purple, they could be white, just we want a really big one. Okay. Because they're going to have a lot of more gut contents. Gut contents. Alright. Got some bottle brush looking Chrysogorgia. Um, that could possibly cry be Chrysogorgia geniculata. Also... Um, thinking about making a collection of one of these vase sponges, possibly. Oh, Let's collect that one. I'm going to look in our guide, see if we have anything like that around in here. Yeah, okay. So, in our guide, we have something that looks similar. 
been ID'd to stereoclamous. And that was seen in American Samoa. Maybe a cuke there too. Oh, um, I don't think that one's Bottom robust right. enough for oh, us. Okay. Yeah. Too yeah, it's a little too wee. Yeah, some of those um, cinelactids, they're just too gelatinous and uh, they don't hold up well on their way up to the surface. So we want to get something a little, a little chunkier. It's a big sponge. It is a big sponge. Yeah, this one doesn't look like some of the other ones that we were looking at. Um, let's see, like and Ocida. You want to sample this thing? Sounds like there's negotiations in progress. All right. Yeah, they're settling out which, settling out which box to put it in. Roger. It sounds like uh, we've got a pretty full box. Um, so I'm, I'm trying to decide if, if this is a good thing to sample or not. And I'm going to look through our guide and see if, what kind of identifications we have for something that looks like this. I do think it is a mm -hmm. Septrulophora of some kind. Possibly the Stereoclamias. Also could probably be a treat addicted, which I believe that has been collected before, so I'm not sure if this particular one is of particular interest. That's all right. But uh, if we could take a look at some of the associates that are on this sponge, that would be good. And then I think um, we'll pass on this as a sample. So, pilot, I think uh, we'll we'll pass and uh, not collect this. All right, where would you like to go? Just keep exploring this top. Yeah, let's just keep exploring this top. There is a lot to see here. Oh my goodness. Also, we have a question in the chat uh, about the direction of the current. Uh, do you have any indication of how strong and what direction the current's coming from as you're flying? It's not very strong. Um, you can see which way it's coming from right now. I'm looking south, and it's coming slightly left to right, but I don't know, negligible. Okay, cool. Thanks. Let's look at this black coral. So this looks like it could be a bathypathies. Bathypathies kind of look like feathers to me. Okay, zoom in, please. And I think uh, I was mentioning earlier, sometimes we see associates with these corals. Uh, occasionally, uh, Polychaete worm might live in the center. 
And I think further up on this, there might have been a brittle star or, or another associate. Ooh, it's windy down there. Just kidding, that's me. There's a brittle star. <laughs> oh, yep, yeah, there it is.